。我们呢，我把这个主持的杰力棒交给我的老朋友威利。嗨，威利。Yes. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Have you seen me?、Oh. Uh, I'm here, uh, yeah. and uh, I still got a little bit sleep as I was、uh, getting up to the first starting of the session. And welcome everybody to the、uh, fifth eFlight forum, which we have、uh, in Yixiang, and、uh, we are really happy that. After last year, where we only had an online session, this time we are the, have the chance that we have a real session again. On、okay. the other hand, we are not so happy because we are still everywhere around the world, and、uh, you have a real、uh, forum there in China. So from now on, we have the、uh, session, which is a session about.、Uh, Evito, and we have this、uh, session in Zoom, and it will be transferred live to the uh, uh, to the screen at the forum in Jishan. And、um, the first session, I am just checking. Can you? Are you there? Because I can't see you on the video yet. Yeah. Yeah. Mister Mister Tian here. Come. So,、uh, because what we have done is there are so many、um, international and uh, uh, developments in Evitol, we had a really hard choice who to pick. And what we have done is we have chosen one which has been、uh, spectacular news recently in、uh, China, which is Autoflight, which has released their latest、uh, aircraft, and we will have.、Uh, The Magic was just released at the,、uh, at the European Rotor Show in Cologne, which is a new eVTOL from Germany. And then, as a third in the session, unluckily Joby could not、uh, come to the session. But we have a very good replacement. We have Mike Hirschberg from the Vertical Flight Society, and he will give us an overview of all the eVTOL situation in. Uh, uh, United States, and with this, I hand my word over to Tian Yu,、uh, an old friend who is working on Evito for a long time already. So, Tian, stage is yours. Okay. Okay. Next, your turn. Thank、uh, you. Thank you.、Uh, one remark, perhaps everybody who is not speaking could switch off his uh, his uh, uh, his video and then switch it on later on the discussion. Then it's easier for everybody、uh, and for the recording because then we have only the image of the speaker. Thank you very much. Hey, good morning, good morning, Willie. Good morning,、uh, friend from Europe. And 各位嗯，领导，各位专家啊，你们好。嗯，今天嗯，给大家汇报一下，嗯，鸿飞航空嗯，现在所做的事情，嗯，就是所谓的。电动飞机改变世界，我们今天说一说，我们想怎么样去改变。当然，这也不是一家公司可以做的。我是希望整个行业，呃，领导、专家、政府，我们共同来实现啊、呃、这个梦想，来让世界变得更美好。啊，鸿飞航空在零四年。When my company was founded in 2017 June. We focuses on the Evito design and manufacturing. In 2019 January, we have the first certified white shark, and its first flight. It realizes the one hour forty two minutes flight, and it also certifies. The efficiency of the design and also redundancy. Then in October 2019, we've got our second model, and which also started its、um, test flight, and、uh, the takeoff weight is 1,100 kilogram, and、uh, this is also a hybrid engine model. 
Then in 2000, uh, then uh, two months ago, in October this year, we've got V1 1500 that's fine and uh, this the payload it's 1500 1, kilograms and the endurance is 250 kilometers with all these flight platforms our goal of um, here's our vision on how we are going to change the world first of all recently we just conducted a test flight in Hong Guangzhou and this is also a, a 50 kilogram weight of a test flight so the test flight started in Tianhe's Plaza, and uh, this is 48 minutes, flying 75 kilometers. The flying altitude is 200 meters. And then it turn stay tuned. Because the aircraft is flying up straight on the air without any traffic lights. And then full landing. So the first model was for healthcare and uh, the next model is for um, cargo transport and uh, this application is in Shanghai we had a seafood delivery flight and uh, the distance is 100 kilometers so one flight the endurance is six hours and the maximum range is 500 kilometers With the assistance of such a flight, the seafood is going to stay fresh and be more tasty. And the third platform is V1500. And this platform aims at building a air mobility platform. And uh, we also connect with uh, companies like SF to to talk about the potential of commercial use of it. So um, in September 2021, V1500 premiered in the expo in Zhuhai. And uh, the debut flight happened in November.
Many things happened in 2021, and uh, we've improved our awareness on um, Evito, and uh, we see a lot. We are receiving more and more help uh, on our development, including the help from um, capital funds as well as governments. And uh, our company's strategy include global aviation talents cooperation. We have our professional team in Germany, and we are also recruiting more talents in the US, and we will start um, ELSA and uh, NFA test fly. So with regard to the capital cooperation, we also uh, work with um, Global Capital, and uh, they've invested 100 million USD and also have provided a lot of help to us and then with regard to industrial cooperation, we reached out to many carriers, operators and supply chains so that we can have better industrial cooperation. Let's uh, shape the future of eVoto together and uh, use the technology of eVoto to change the world. Thank you. Yes, hello. Um, I, yes, hello. Uh, I'm back in. Hello, and thank you, Tian. And it's really amazing that every year when you come to the EFI forum and present uh, something, there is something new. Although I talk with you on a regular basis, I think this is very good. And so thank you very much. And now from China, we come to our next speaker. Uh, Michael Kugelgen. Uh, Michael, could you switch on your video? Ciao. Bye. Yeah. Michael? Yes, can you hear me, Willy? Yes, we hear you, uh, but your video is I'm off. Perfect. So, thanks for this introduction, Willy. Uh, I'm Michael Kugelgen. I'm a mechanical engineer. And within the next 20 minutes, uh, first, uh, I would like to introduce us, all our partners. We will shed some light on the technology and what we did. We will see a few videos and we will also discuss the next steps. So, as I said, I'm Michael Kugelgen. I founded the company MK Technology 25 years back. And at this project, Imagic, uh, I'm uh, responsible for the aircraft design and uh, the management and of course also i'm the number one test pilot uh, test pilot so far uh, i'm a pilot for 45 years on fixed wings and helicopters as well uh, in the 80s and in the 90s i developed uh, unmanned air vehicles the drones for the military projects and um Then I started in in the 90s, uh, the company MK Technology, uh, and one of the highlights has been the development of the complete uh, investment casting production site for Elon Musk and his uh, company SpaceX. My partner and co-founder is uh, Thomas Senkel, who was 10 years back the first man who was flying uh, in a copter. Uh, manned, and he is also the co-founder at this uh, year's uh, of Volocopter. Uh, then uh, the other partner uh, we are teaming with is uh, Mirko Pecorari. He is an Italian guy. He is responsible for the design, for the liberings, and uh, we have also very close and very successful cooperation. Matthias Schricker, German fellow, also in the aircraft business for decades. He made all the molds and the composite work for us. Uh, and his brother, he, he is responsible for the load analysis and he is the brain behind the, the whole structure. Uh, my friend uh, Richard uh, from Helix Carbon, uh, he is a propeller manufacturer and he, he developed all this very efficiency. Uh, propellers, lifting propellers and cruising propellers. This is also a very experienced uh, friend of mine, 
who is doing all the milling work and this uh, was quite important when we uh, developed our own electric propulsion system especially the electric motors and last but not least this young fellow moritz he's a software engineering uh, and he is responsible for the whole control uh, of the drone and uh, flight management system when we start this project we discuss the design principle and first when we uh, when we did it, uh, it was totally clear that we have to reach out for the impossible, because as you just have seen, uh, it's a team of uh, around five people, uh, and uh, we try to uh, to have uh, uh, this new project uh, similar to companies like Airbus and Boeing, uh, who are working with hundreds of engineers, and. Um, their budget are also are hundreds of millions of euros and we finance everything out of our own pocket so you can say it's almost impossible right from the beginning you have to accept rebounds if you know this everything is uh, is easier to accept because there, there will be rebounds and and failures uh, during such uh, such a long project and uh, one of uh, my uh, 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 ideas is to have such con uh, such a design always very simple to keep it simple to be successful uh, or what i'm always telling my people complicated can be done by everybody but the real art is to keep a design simple the design targets of of this aircraft has been it should be fully electric and it should be a proof of concept because that uh, a drone for example from dgi with one kg or maybe five kg can be controlled only by a difference in rpm it's uh, it's clear but is it even possible with an aircraft and uh, with uh, a few hundred kg and with propeller lifting propellers no longer 20 centimeters but two meters in diameter so we we try to make this proof of concept it should take off and land vertically uh, it should have one hour of endurance and it should have a top speed of up to 100 knots this has been our design target and of course it should have the lowest possible weight on earth and we should have the best power unit to have at least a chance to be successful uh, and because it was electric one of our design goals has uh, was uh, to be as uh, less noisy as possible so our strategy was to develop the two uh, technologies totally in parallel one was the airframe and the aerodynamic and the other was the copter Uh, we have to define milestones and only when we reach one milestone we have been allowed to move forward to do to do the next one and of course except uh, very excessive testing 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 not doing renderings not doing virtual animation testing and flying when we start this project we first had an overview of all these projects around the world and there are different main directions one is the and we are looking for the best solution uh, one is a pure copter for example like uh, volocopter did it already 10 years ago but in respect of endurance and in respect of top speed is uh, quite poor so we decided not to go this way anymore otherwise uh, thomas Senkel could have continued with volocopter uh, the other concept are tilting wings and tilting rotors and with today's battery technology this is a very heavy solution and in respect of uh, the aerodynamic it's also very challenging so under the headline keep it simple we finally decided to have the lift and cruise configuration that means there are propellers responsible for the takeoff and for the vertical takeoff and there are other propeller and propulsion system for the normal cruise flight so and let me now 
just show you the video of the very first test we made with remote controlled aircrafts. So very simple, very easy takeoff. And the same with the reverse transition. Parking in the sky. The eight hovering props taking over and it's a safe vertical landing. So we made in the beginning a lot of different models to check the center of gravity, to check different airfoils and to check uh, the front wing area and the back wing area. And we finally decided uh, to have this tandem wing configuration because it's a very stable design uh, in respect of the booms outside for the eighth lifting propellers. So this is already the final design in respect of aerodynamics. This is a one to four a scale model. And here we ended up really with a final design. It's a half scale model, which we're building and we collected a lot of experience uh, and we made hundreds of test flights with this aircraft. Uh, here have a look at the stall characteristic of this, uh, of this aircraft. It's It's still stable, you, it's still controllable, and the elevons are full up. It's in a controllable descent. The current here, it's this canal uh, wing, it's turbulent. Here, everything is very healthy, and it's full controllable. And you see how gentle and easy even the landing is with this big bird. So it's a very nice, very forgiving, very solid aerodynamic construction. After we finished this test with uh, this milestone, we continued with uh, the load analysis uh, and we checked where we have to reinforce everything, where we have to have the uh, carbon fiber structure, the honeycomb. Uh, and uh, we continued with the mold baking Milling the negative molds. This is, a, by the way, this is a fuselage. These are the winglets. And uh, we made the composite parts mainly out of carbon fiber and reinforced honeycomb structures. Everything has been tested intensively with, uh, with heavy loads. Every part, every single part has to be checked. And uh, weight has been our enemy, so every part uh, has to pass the weight examination. And we were really fighting for every gram. Here you see we made the landing strut. It's also a sandwich structure, carbon and plywood, and everything sucked under vacuum. And this was the first fit, so everything has uh, was assembled, came together, and first time I was sitting in this aircraft. And here you see this is the young, uh, the elder, but smaller brother, the one to two scale model. And here is the real aircraft, which is really a copy of this model. So the safety features, we put a lot of safety issues and features into this aircraft. First of all, it's the uh, canal configuration itself because it's very stable it's uh, you, it's not possible to uh, to have a spin uh, it's uh, always a uh, stable dive when you pull full full elevons uh, we have a safety uh, monocoque around the pilot out of uh, kevlar uh, and we have a ballistic parachute so these are the main safety features and uh, as I told you before, we have the 
a parallel development of the copter. And again, we started with a model. So have a look. We checked everything. And we made also hundreds of test flights with this flying frame. and so on and so forth. After this successful test of this, uh, we uh, made the design for the one-to-one -one frame. That means this span is 7.6 meter, the same span like the, the aircraft has. And before we start with the welding, we had again a 10 to a scaled model to check the static, which are all closed triangles. And the whole structure is foldable, foldable in less than, than a minute. You open the ropes and then you can put it together like an umbrella. You see it flying remote control with the eight lifting propellers. Uh, there are the battery packs, and this is here is the brain, the control unit. And uh, to summarize this, it was a complete new development of the, of the airframe. It was a tandem wing. We developed from scratch and from zero the electric propulsion system. All electric motors has been done by us. The propellers are complete new design. The front propeller, but mainly the eight lifting propellers. We have our own battery battery management system. Uh, and of course, we developed our own software. And now I would like to show you how this bird really is flying. Yeah, so far it's unmanned, but we checked it also with a pilot on board. And now we converted the whole technology into the airframe and we combined both technologies.
So the next thing I would like to show you without music is the the sound of this aircraft, because this is also very impressive and it's a, a new chapter in general aviation. Please, please listen. There's no music anymore. This is the real sound of this aircraft. Listen to the birds. Even the birds are louder, not only jealous, they are also louder. It's a low pass in eight to 10 meters distance. This is engine shut off. And this is back to the engine. And this is final approach. Again, you can hear the, bir the birds and not the aircraft. And even the eight hovering propellers have been very silent because we are working on a very low RPM below 2000. Absolutely acceptable, not annoying. So everybody asks us, uh, why the hell are you doing this? You have a very good running company. Uh, you supply a lot of companies around the world. Why do you start such a project? And first of all, we love to, to create new things and to, to manufacture uh, New, uh, new new projects by our own. We, uh, we love to be creative, and of course, we we love flying. This this was uh, the motor and the engine behind everything. And I also would like to discuss the next steps we are uh, planning to do beginning of next year. First, more flight tests, intensive flight tests more transition flights uh, it will we will work for the full german uh, micro light certification no longer a preliminary permit to fly but the full certification uh, and we will start to manufacture a small series to collect even more experience with the single seater and now I would like to invite you to a small virtual tour. Please enjoy. This is our single seater you have seen in the video and which is flying superb with all good flying qualities you can imagine. And this will be the future. It's a four-seater. It's also full electric twin engine. It's the same aerodynamics that is like the Imagic one. And this Imagic Next has in total 10 lifting motors. And one of the big advantages of, of this design is the battery parts, which are underneath the wing, separated from the main fuselage, and it's easy to change if you like, and if you don't have the chance for fast charging. So the next steps are besides the test flights with Imagic One and the single seater is to continue with this Imagic Next project. The three-seater, maybe a four-seater, there is space enough in the cabin. Uh, uh, we are working on autonomous flights that there should be not an uh, experienced pilot anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we are reaching out for longer endurance and higher speed. Longer endurance means at least two hours and more than 100 knots. Right now we are, the top speed is 92 knots with a, with a Blackbird. Uh, so there is a lot of work within the, the coming years. And uh, so far, everything has developed by, by our small team and out of our own pocket. Uh, the next step, we would like to invite interested 
uh, uh, people, technicians, investors uh, to join our team uh, and to help us to, to shape this future. Okay. Thanks for the moment. And if there are questions, I'm available. Thank you very much, Michael. And uh, a lot of interesting designs, the details. That's why the presentation also is a little bit longer than we planned. So I have to speak a little bit faster now. No, thank you very much. And we will have the questions and the session uh, with all uh, after the third presenter of this group. Um, and I'm sure also, Mike, you will have some questions. I know you have seen this aircraft already because I did meet you in Cologne at the show. And thank you for getting up or staying up so late because Mike is actually in California. So we're really around the globe eFlight Forum. And as we are a little bit late already, I cut off my video. I think you, if you switch on your mic, your mic, Mike, your mic is still off. Uh, yes, now it's on and I go off and leave you the stage. Perhaps you share your screen and then talk to you later in the discussion. All right, and just uh, let me know how long you want me to talk for. I think um, I was scheduled for 15, I can still do that or something shorter. Yes, you know, if it's uh, 10 to 15 minutes, it's fine. If it's a bit shorter, it's okay, but we are still okay. We have some buffer time in. Okay, and you can see my screen okay, right? Yes, we see it now, thank you. Great, okay, well, uh, good evening or guten Morgen or ni hao. Very pleased today to, to speak to you. Um, uh, I'm actually in the Washington DC area, so on the other coast of uh, the United States, but many of the American uh, eVTOL companies are in California, which I'll give a, a brief overview. So the Vertical Flight Society was founded in 1943 as the American Helicopter Society, uh, but we cover everything that uh, takes off vertically. Uh, so that's um, drones and helicopters and eVTOL aircraft. And we're a educational membership organization. So we invite anybody that's interested in, in, uh, in working with us and being a member uh, to join. We have members from industry, academia, and government. Uh, and um, as an example, uh, um, Avicopter, uh, Avic uh, Helicopter Company was a, was a member. Uh, DGI is a member. The Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics is a member. So we have members from around the world and, and chapters around the world. Um, and we're an educational society. So it's all about trying to understand and help promote and advance uh, vertical flight. Um, so we as mentioned we were founded uh, in 1943. We had our first, uh, uh, the first inter national meeting in, uh, in 1944. And 70 years later, we had the world's first international meeting of uh, eVTOL. And many of the, of the uh, innovators today, many of the leaders today are shown on the bottom uh, screen. We have a magazine and we cover all the major topics in vertical flight, so helicopters, eVTOL, and everything else. Uh, it's all online, so if you join, then you have access to all of our issues for the last uh, 68 years. We have uh, a technical journal with uh, scientific papers on vertical feet. Uh, and we have lots of online resources. So we have our website, evtall.news, with over 575 aircraft concepts and more than 200 different designers. Uh, we're unfortunately not on WeChat, but we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and we encourage everyone to look at what we have, uh, join us. Uh, we have a free newsletter with uh, updates, uh, and we try to bring everybody together around the world to help see how we can help each other and, and uh, help develop these different uh, exciting aircraft. We really see electric propulsion as being a major uh, revolution, a transformative capability that goes from small uh, package delivery, personal, uh, you know, one seat, two seat, VTOL aircraft, cargo delivery, uh, air taxis, uh, and even regional air mobility. So uh, aircraft that will be able to take off from one city and, and fly to another. 
lots of different uh, reasons for this. Uh, this has been covered before, uh, but things like, you know, advances in electric motors, batteries, computer modeling and simulation, uh, composites. Uh, you saw, saw what eMagic did with their innovative uh, composite structures and uh, low cost manufacturing uh, in Europe and um, in the US and in China. There's uh, uh, looking at how do we change the existing regulations to allow all these new types of aircraft to fly and to remain safe. So many different technology innovations, uh, more than 10 billion US dollars has been invested in e Um You see on the, on the right hand side, you know, people are now able to fly to into space. Uh, there's this really exciting future of, uh, of people with people with money to invest and the technologies are right. Uh, to shape this new exciting vertical flight future. I put together a chart here showing the eVTOL aircraft, passenger aircraft, uh, and uh, a number of orders uh, for each of the aircraft. Now these orders of course are, you know, based on the aircraft has to be certified in order for somebody to actually buy and operate them. But you can see, you know, thousands of orders for eVTOL aircraft um, from, from around the world. I'm now going to talk about uh, uh, four or five leading US uh, companies that are developing EV aircraft. Um, so the one who's uh, furthest ahead has been working the longest and uh, has uh, made the most advancements for a large aircraft is the Joby S4. It's a uh, one pilot and four seats. Uh, 2.7 tons. Uh, Joby Aircraft was founded in 2009. They're on target to reach certification of the aircraft in 2023. And uh, they've had uh, more than a thousand flights. They've also raised the most money. Um, and it's a very high performance uh, aircraft. Um, and they're based in Santa Cruz, California, which is in uh, Silicon Valley near San Francisco. Uh, another company, uh, Beta Technologies, is the only one uh, that I'll be talking about today that's not based in California in that area, uh, in Vermont, which is on the east coast of the United States. Uh, they're looking at uh, slightly larger, uh, 3.2 tons. Uh, they're a more recent um, company founded in 2008, uh, 2017. They have both a cargo and a uh, passenger aircraft. Um, you can see the diagram, this shows six seats, but they also have a version with uh, one seat and just cargo. Um, the air, the uh, photo on the top left shows it flying. It, it's flown for an hour or more, uh, but without the lifting propellers. On the right-hand side is the, uh, the aircraft with the lift propellers, four lift propellers on it. Um, I'm not sure if it's flown yet with those. Uh, they haven't made any updates. So uh, they may have done that now, but they did a lot of conventional takeoff and landing flights before they started, uh, before they started to do their vertical takeoff and landing. Another company that started uh, a long time ago, uh, originally founded in 2010 uh, as Z-Aero. Um, they now have a joint venture with uh, Boeing, so it's called a WISC. The aircraft is Cora. Uh, they've flown uh, 1,500, maybe 2,000 flights or more uh, over the last several years. It's sized to be two seats. On the right-hand side, you can see what the aircraft looks like with seats. Um, to, uh, I'm not, I don't think they've flown with people in it before. Uh, they've been flying uh, unmanned, and their intent is to deliver an aircraft that's autonomous. So from the very beginning, that, uh, that flies um, without... I think they can fly completely by itself without human intervention. And for in the, the US with the FAA and in, in Europe with EASA, uh, that's a very, um, that's going to be a very challenging thing to, um, to be certified. Um, so that's, but they, but they really want to do that from the very beginning. Uh, another company, uh, a little bit newer, uh, Archer Aviation, they were founded in 2018, but really uh, got going about two years ago. Uh, and they've built a two-seat demonstrator aircraft. So this has uh, six uh, tilting propellers and then six uh, stopped propellers in, in the rear. 
they're supposed to fly any day now. Uh, it could be this week or next week. Uh, hopefully they're having some bad weather in California, um, but hopefully that'll clear up and they'll be able to, to finish their ground testing and their, and their flight testing. Um, they're also, even though they haven't flown anything, they're hoping that this information from this two-seater will allow them to build their five-seater, which is going to look like this, only larger. Um, and they have uh, lots of agreements with uh, airlines and other companies to buy and operate them. And then another company that's uh, related to uh, WISC uh, is Kitty Hawk. Uh, they have spent uh, the last um, six or seven years developing a single seat electric VTOL aircraft. Uh, this is a very high performance, uh, lightweight, almost like a glider. Um, uh, intended for uh, for just one seat, um, they've I think they've almost they've flown almost exclusively unmanned, but they have I think they've made at least a couple of manned flights. So uh, just to summarize uh, some of the challenges, uh, there's the technology that the batteries are are getting better, the motors are getting better. Uh, it's now uh, the technology is now there large enough or, or good enough where like you saw with eMagic, with Autoflight, with other companies, they're, they're able to make larger and larger aircraft that will have better and better performance. There's also the infrastructure issues. Um, there's the physical landing pads, uh, charging station. There's also the air traffic control, how to integrate drones and air, helicopters and airplanes and all, all together. Um, how do we get enough pilots to fly them initially? And then uh, this, uh, how do we transition the, this aircraft to be autonomous? I mentioned uh, uh, regulations, also standards. How do we make sure that these aircraft are safe? You can't just scale up a drone and put a person in it and think that's gonna be safe. You really have to look at the safety challenges like an airline today. How do we take something that carries hundreds of people and scale it down to carry, you know, four or five people and make sure that it's safe. There's also the public acceptance. Uh, they've got to be safe. Uh, the noise has to be low. Uh, we, there's an expression NIMBY, which is not in my backyard. So yes, we could probably have hundreds or maybe thousands of ETL aircraft taking off and landing behind, you know, the next street over, but do people want to see all those airplanes flying? So that's a question that needs to be answered. So just in summary, the Vertical Flight Society is the global educational uh, membership society for people that want to help advance vertical flight and, and have the benefits of the network. Um, we have a, a nice website we encourage you to look at. Uh, and we also have one that's dedicated just on eVTOL. It's an exciting future. $10 billion around the world has gone into eVTOL over the last several years, uh, hundreds and hundreds of concepts. We really think that eVTOL technology is, is really revolutionary, just like with the turbine engine for airplanes. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's very exciting and, and revolutionary and has a lot of benefits. So with that, uh, Willie, I uh, conclude my presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mike, and very nice, very compact overview on the what's happening in the United States. And when I saw your last slide, which was saying, okay, uh, these are the challenges coming up, you will see that in the rest of the, our forum, we'll have a lot of these uh, things addressed, like traffic management, like infrastructure, and like certification, which I think, or what I, which I know will be our next session. Um, but before we go to the next session, we now are in the discussion. So maybe Jen, if you could come back to the microphone and on the stage, and then um, we are open for questions. Just one information for the uh, visitors on site in China. If you have any questions, you can go to the translators, you can see with Lulu, our organizer, and then give them the question. Uh, Lulu will then pass it on to uh, Xin, and Xin, uh, then I can ask the question. I think that's the most active way. Otherwise, we also, those speakers who are in the Zoom call and have a question can raise their hand 
and then we can unmute them and you can ask your questions directly. Um, I have some questions myself. So uh, these questions I'm going to start uh, right now. That's my privilege that I can ask immediately. Um, first question to Tian. Um, you mentioned that you are now building up a, a kind of global force as Evitol is a global thing. Um, so what would be, where will be the next step? Will it be in Europe and what will be the steps in Europe? Yeah, we are having some professional people on board um, shortly in January. And uh, we will also build IMD team uh, again that um, it's meant more for testing. We will try to get DOA and uh, uh, certify with uh, ELSA in three something years. Um, we try to start next year and uh, maybe later after that, Later the year, we will also um, start in Los Angeles, how to fly USA that we will you know, work, work with FAA to get FAA certification afterwards. Okay, a quick follow-up questions. As I'm interested in this, as I'm living in Germany, uh, do you already know where in Germany uh, the base will be for auto flight? Augsburg Airport. Augsburg Munich. Airport, this is in the greater Munich area for those who are not so familiar. Uh, okay, so I, my next question is, though so it would be the same, uh, the question for, for you, just for people to know. Um, Michael, uh, uh, where are uh, you located in Germany? Because uh, I, I don't think, I'm not sure if you mentioned, I don't remember, but I think the people are interested. Uh, we are right in the middle of Germany on the west side. Uh, it's uh, close to Bonn. Bonn was the former capital of Germany. Okay, good. Um, and a uh, question to Mike. At this point, um, you mentioned a lot of the activities uh, which you, with VFS is doing. And uh, it's not only promotion for uh, your association, I think it's also very good for the communication because with all the events you created and helped the dynamic of developing the uh, electric flight and the vehicle flight. So could you just tell when is the next event, as you, have you said, when you will talk about vehicle uh, in United States? So maybe we will we'll be able to travel again. Yes, uh, thanks, Willie. Uh, so yes, we have um, several conferences a year, uh, technical conferences. We have our next one will be in January, the last week of January, the week of uh, January 24th. That's in uh, San Jose, California, in, the, um, in Silicon Valley in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so we have uh, 120 speakers over three days. We have a uh, uh, we'll have several uh, eVTOL aircraft on display uh, and exhibitors and uh, courses for people that want to learn. And uh, we were expecting about uh, about 500 people uh, hopefully to attend. Oh. So we really welcome everyone to uh, see if they can come. Okay, thank you. Um, next question uh, we received here would be for Tian Yu because the people asked this uh, Cargo drones you've shown before, um, are which ones are already in production? And have you already delivered some to customers who are using them in China? Because I know in China, the regulations allow, allow um, people to use uh, unmanned uh, vertical takeoff vehicles already now for commercial activities. Yeah, the B-50 and the 400 are already delivered, starting delivery this year, like we show that seafood and also some um, desert area uh, for some tools and transportation. So those two are starting shipping. Okay, thank you. And Michael, I have, would have a question, or I have a question for you, which is um, you are, um, uh, have been developing uh, drones for the military 
uh, already quite a long time ago when not many people were in drones. Um, now you're in eVTOL and you build an aircraft. Uh, do you think there will be also um, unmanned versions of your aircraft or you think there is a market for this and would you then be willing also to work on this? Two times, yes. Uh, for sure, uh, instead of having one or three or four passengers, uh, we can have a big payload. And I know that uh, especially the military uh, is quite interested in, in all these things and also our development. Uh, and yeah, uh, like uh, 35 years back, uh, we are willing to support this, no question. Okay. Uh, um... Uh, now a question to all the three of us and we will have answer one by one. What do you think is, two questions, is the greatest challenge for getting eVTOL services uh, in the air and on the market? And the second, when do you think your own vehicle is able to be flown that passengers could flow with this vehicle? I know there is a lot of gas in there because certification, which we will hear in the next session. So, um, but there are more challenges. So um, again, we start with Tian and then go through the road. So should I answer first? Yes, yes, yes always. Tian first and then Michael and then Mike. Okay, of course, there's a lot of challenge, but I think from a technical point, uh, the um, technology are there so the challenge are safety and certification. Um, so I think that's the most challenge. Um, mm -hmm. When I think uh, for us, the cargo to man version, the cargo one, you know, we start shipping already. So just from small to big, one by one. Thank you. And the man version, do you have an eye? When, when do you think the man version will fly, uh, will fly with passengers? Uh, I think uh, before certified, we already can get some approval to do some experimental flying maybe later next year. Mm -hmm. Not with the customer, but uh, our own testing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michael, uh, what is it? You have showed a very fast pro progress, uh, only two and a half years for the whole development. When uh, do you think you can uh, uh, fly? And also, uh, sure, the question, what is the biggest challenge? Well, uh, I agree that one of the biggest challenges is uh, the certification work. Right now, we are uh, flying with a preliminary uh, permission. And uh, we, we can use this. And for sure, we will, uh, we will continue with all our flight tests with a single seater. Uh, so again, uh, biggest uh, uh, one of the biggest challenges is uh, certification work. Another, from a technical point of view, will be improving the batteries. This is mandatory. Uh, and uh, when the, the our four seater will fl fly, it depends uh, uh, on the support we will we will have and we will collect within the next uh, uh, coming weeks and months. Okay, uh, so yeah, then I would say, um, do we have any questions from audience? No, we don't have at this time. Um, I think there was one in the chat. Um, yes, so uh, there is a question of uh, how can the, um, how you say that the, yeah, the, how you think of the supply chain has to be organized uh, for VTOL? Will this be the manufacturer is doing everything from the propeller till the seats uh, uh, or and the motors and the batteries, like battery packs at least? Or do you think it will be more like it is an airline business that you have a large group of suppliers which will be used? Um, so yeah, again, the opinion, perhaps now we ask Mike first and then we go back to Michael and Tian. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it depends. So some companies want to do everything themselves. Uh, Michael has shown his ability to you know, make his own motors. Uh, other companies, especially those who want to be allowed to produce, you know, hundreds or thousands of 
or or thousands of aircraft want to have suppliers that do those. But you know, an eVTOL aircraft is a very tightly integrated uh, aircraft design. So the the manufacturer needs to be able to control the quality and the performance and get everything out of it. So I think it's going to depend. Um, we'll have to see, I guess, different companies will probably choose different options. Okay, thank you. Um, Michael and Jan, a quick answer because we have to, uh, I was forced by the co-organizers in China, we have to keep the schedule. So uh, just a quick answer on this question and then we will go over to the next session. Thank you, I already say now, thank you very much for coming. I'm sure I'll see you again and hopefully not only on Zoom, but in reality very soon. So Michael and Tian, and then we're done with this session. Okay, very simple and quick answer. What you can buy out of the shelf, please buy it. Don't invent the wheel anew. Uh, but there are key components like the airframe and in our case, the electric motors. If there's nothing available on the market, uh, which is uh, sufficient, we have to do it by our own. Okay, in our case, because the aircraft is uh, it's just so special, we couldn't buy anything. So we make every module ourselves. Thank you, Willie. Okay, thank you very much. So this was a session in detail. How can you get eFlight Journal? Just scan the QR code on this page. Or just type in your browser www.eflightjournal.com then you receive the page with the latest online news on electric flying, eVTOL and everything which is connected with electric mobility in the air. Or you can click the link on the top and then you go to the latest PDF version which you either can read in the Yumpu reader directly on your screen like a conventional magazine or you can go and download the magazine as PDF file so that you can read it offline wherever you want. Thanks for watching and goodbye.